Hello to everyone. Today we're going to discuss one of the most popular functions in Excel, which is VLOOKUP. However, today I would like to propose to consider other alternative options how to solve the same tasks. Before jumping in Excel and looking at concrete examples, it's important to understand the essence of the task we're trying to solve with VLOOKUP function and what are the different approaches to solving this task. Let's try to figure it out. So before entering the topic of whether we need to use VLOOKUP or not, let's first clarify a few elements. First of all, what is the task that we're trying to solve with VLOOKUP? The standard element in Excel is a table. And any table could be split into three conceptual elements. It's the column key area, the row key area, and the data. In order to make it more concrete, let's imagine that our table represents the sales of fruits by month. Try to extract the sales of the apples in May. And this value is equal to X. What are the two key steps in order to complete this exercise? The first step to extract the value X is to find the position of this element in the data set. And the second step is by using the coordinates, which we defined on step one, is to extract the exact value x from the table. Let's see how we can approach this two-step exercise. The first approach is VLOOKUP. And VLOOKUP actually combines steps one and two, shown on the left, in one formula. However, there is a different approach how to solve this task. And in this example, we will split the steps one and two between two different functions. The match function as an input receives the row or the column key area, or the two of them, if we use the two-dimensional data table and also the elements which we want to find them. The result of match function is the number, which shows the position of the element in the row key area or the column key area. The index function is responsible for the second step of the algorithm. As an input, we receive the data area and also the coordinates of the element. And then as a result, we receive the value of the element, which is x. The question is, why do we need to consider utilization of two formulas instead of one to do the same thing? Let's look at the examples in Excel and see why. In order to save time, I already pre-filled the formulas. And as you can see, the first one works through VLOOKUP formula and takes as an input the name of the fruit and the number of the column. And the formula with the combination of index match does exactly the same with only one difference that instead of one search, which we do in VLOOKUP, we find the right row for the respective fruit and the right column for the respective months. Let's see what are the practical differences between these two approaches. And the first disadvantage of VLOOKUP formula is very obvious. It has only one dimensional search. So in this specific example, your input for the column is a simple number, while for index match combination, you can do the search both among the rows and among the columns. Definitely we can find some site solution and also incorporate some formula to be able to find the column number. But then the whole benefit of utilization of VLOOKUP and having the shorter formula disappears immediately. The second disadvantage of VLOOKUP formula is a consequence of the first one. We are not able to add or kill any column. Essentially, the column structure cannot be changed. So if we add one column in this example, we immediately see that the value in the output is not correct. This is driven by the fact that in a new table, which we take as an argument for our VLOOKUP formula, the right column, which we need to use in order to extract the data for month March, is number five. Definitely this is an issue and even if you correct it, you need to correct the formula once again. And the last disadvantage which we have when we use the Vilka formula is the lack of flexibility. What I mean here is that for index and match formulas combination, it doesn't matter where do you look for the key, which is row and column, and where is your real data located. We can take this section and move it wherever we want, here or even here. The VLOOKUP formula doesn't have flexibility for this type of changes. Actually, we can go even to the, some extreme examples and we don't necessarily need to have the data on one tab. We can have it in two tabs. As you can see, even in this example, the second formula works properly. These are the three main disadvantages which we face when we use the VLOOKUP formula. The only advantage with VLOOKUP formula utilization is that it is shorter. Is this tiny benefit really sufficient to overcome all the disadvantages which we covered before? In my opinion, no. At the end, the decision is up to you. With this, I want to conclude. Thank you and see you in the next video.